Well, joining us now is Sean Binder, the Irish volunteer aid worker who was involved in helping men, women and children in Lesbos in Greece who'd crossed the waters to Europe and has been facing criminal charges related to that work. Sean Binder, if you could take us back to 2018 and the work you were doing and the day you were arrested, what happened? Of course. Um, I volunteered with a small Greek charity doing search and rescue. We had search and rescue boats, we had medical teams, and simply we'd respond to people in distress. Uh, oftentimes we had boats arriving that would be taken on water, for example, or people would be in severe uh, medical need. And so we would be able to respond to them, whether on land or at the in the sea itself. And then one night, despite having worked together with the police, shoulder to shoulder, I might add, for quite a few years at that point as an organization, the police came at around 3 a.m. at night and arrested us, me and my colleague Sarah Mardini, without being very clear as to why exactly. We spent two nights in a cell receiving almost no information until eventually being released pending further investigation. And then an article was given to the local media a few days later that read, a, a, a spy had been arrested in a military jeep trying to infiltrate a naval base to steal state secrets. And I thought initially that's pretty cool because I didn't think that this would become a narrative that I would be embroiled in for years to come and indeed charged as a spy. But that's exactly what happened only months later. And I spent three and a half months in prison because of it. And Sean, that was four years ago, over four years ago now. And today in court, some of those charges were thrown out. What's your reaction to that? I think the most shocking thing is that we had waited four years to get to trial. You know, if we were truly the heinous criminals that we were supposed to be, then surely the prosecution would want us behind bars years ago. And if they had any evidence, then we would have been. And in fact, today, the prosecution itself advocated for a dropping of the espionage charge and for a dismissal entirely of the indictment. For me, that was a bizarre outcome. I had spent time in prison. I faced 20 years imprisonment still. And then for the prosecution to say, you know what, never mind, forget about it, feels very bittersweet because, of course, the cost has been not just for me personally, but there is no more search and rescue happening on this island and people continue to drown. And that is because they're afraid to do this kind of work. You are still facing some other serious felony charges. Um, does what happened today undermine those charges, do you believe? Or what have you been told? I think it does begin to drive a wedge into the argument that the prosecution had formed four years ago, not least because the prosecution's resolve is clearly not what it once was. However, I think the danger is not so much we'll be found guilty because I'm confident that saving lives isn't a crime. I, I know for a fact that it isn't. But I'm not confident that the prosecution will expedite the felony trial. And the statute of limitations for this upcoming trial is another 15 years. And so far, the prosecution has used a delay tactic. And if it does so again, then, you know, I'll be I'll be reaching pension age and not have moved on with my life. Now, you're still in Lesbos at the moment, but you are on bail and you will be free to leave there, I think, tomorrow. Um, how has this affected your life, though? It's been going on for four years. I mean, it's it's been... It's been really shattering, I think, you know, going to prison for doing what what I learned in Ireland, you know, the principles of fault, the, the, the rule of law, all of them compel us to show compassion to people in distress at sea and then to be imprisoned for doing so, I think was deeply disturbing. And even now being released on bail, you know, it's incredibly expensive and it's it's personally quite difficult to deal with. I mean, if I want to have a family, I'm going to be 30 soon. If I want to have a family, I, I can't do so with the risk of imprisonment hanging over me. Despite all that's happened, and, Sean Binder, would you do it again? Absolutely. And I don't think that that should be controversial. Imagine you arrive at the scene of a car accident and you see someone in distress. What would you check first? Their pulse or their passport? If, like me, you check their pulse first, you've committed the same crime I'm supposed to have committed. And we must reject that. Of course, we would always show compassion to someone in distress. It doesn't matter where they're from or who they are. OK, Sean Binder speaking to us from Lesbos in Greece. Thank you.